My name is Rick Mannon, and I'm an inductee into the Brantford and Area Sports Hall of Recognition. And I'm here and happy to be in introducing and interviewing Ray Truant for the sport of football today. Ray Truant's family was from Windsor, but he was born across the river in Detroit in 1930. Ray had a stellar university athletic career playing at Assumption College in the University of Western Ontario in both basketball and football. He played on championship team teams in both sports and was named the Ontario University Athletic Association All-Star in both sports. In 1952-53, to 53, he was named Western's Athlete of the Year. Professionally, Ray played with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the CFL from 1953 to 1957 and was honored as a Shenley Award nominee for Top Canadian in the CFL. He played on two Grey Cup championship teams in 1953 and 1957. An injury, unfortunately, while making a tackle prompted a premature retirement for football in 1957. Ray was a high school teacher and coach football, basketball, and track and field in Brantford from 1953 till his retirement in 1986. He was inducted into the University of Western Ontario W Club Sports Hall of Fame in 1984. Ray was inducted into the Brantford Area Sports of Hall of Recognition in 1993 for the sport of football. Okay, Ray, why did you take up the sport of football? Well, I didn't have a chance to play it in uh, public school and uh, there were a couple of buddies who went to the same high school I went to and they wanted to get into football and so I said well I'll see what what it's like and go in grade nine and go go to the first practices and so on and from then I just kept on going I guess Okay. At the university level, you were successful at both football and basketball. What made you choose to pursue football over basketball at, at that higher level? Well, actually, at the university, um, I, played the, I played football, and when the season was over, I was still in time to go try out for the basketball team and, and play basketball in that respect. So, so it really was no conflict in doing it. It just happened to be that way. Um, I played basketball in public school, of course, and I also played one year at, at Assumption University. And um, that at that time, it wasn't affiliated with Western. So when I got to, to London, to Western, uh, John Metris, the bull, as he was called, was coaching football and basketball. And so I, I just got into, the, into that activity as well. So it worked out fine for me. Good. On the Tiger Cats alumni website, you're listed as defensive back and wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Was playing both ways more demanding on an athlete in football during those days compared to now? Well, <laughs> it probably would have been if it was a very, um, if, if it occurred quite a, quite a lot of the time. But it, that wasn't the case. There were, there were times when I had to fill in for somebody who was posh, partially injured or, and, uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed the offense, but uh, I, there was no there was no conflict between you know between that. If I if the, the injured person if he came back I would I would spend the rest of my time with the football you know there would be no no conflict as it were. Okay. Uh, Ray, you were fortunate to play on some very good university and CNFL teams during the 50s. Is there one specific highlight or experience that stands out more than any other in your careers in both the OUAA and the CFL? Well, uh, of course, in the OUAA, 
there was there was no such a thing as there, as there is now a, a national championship in uh, in football for the universities. So um, that that wasn't a problem as far you know as far as I was concerned at the time. Um, university, of course, basketball. Um, in 1952, there was a uh, a championship for for uh, for basketball, Canadian championship. Well, we won the OUA in basketball, and then uh, we had to play the University of Calgary in uh, in basketball. And we happened to beat them, so that made us the Canadian champions for for basketball. Um, <laughs> then we had to play the Tilsonburg Livingstons. They were, uh, you know, made up of former university players and so on. And that was to arrive or to get a team for the. Helsinki Olympics, I think it was, and of course they beat us. So they they took a couple of players. They didn't take me, uh, which I can understand. So uh, there was from then, and uh, I think it it goes on now. Like basketball is the same almost as football. You know, they have the they have the. Dominion or the Canadian Championships right. in both those sports. Mm -hmm. Okay. You were a high school teacher at the same time that you were a professional football player. What was that like and how did you manage to fit both occupations into your schedule? Well, the fact that uh, school ended, you know, the end of June and uh, you were off for July and August before the actual season started, and that was no no interference as far as I, as far as I was concerned, making like commuting back and forth to Brantford in the summertime was great. <laughs> During the schedule, though, I found that I had to get away from there to make six o'clock practice in Hamilton, and. Um, other than that, it was no problem. Well, in 1956, you yeah. sustained an injury, and and I understand the following year you weren't able to play at your full, um, fully. Uh, yeah. And uh, and then soon thereafter, you you finished your career in football. Yeah. Um, what was the injury, and do you recall how it happened? The injury was I dislocated my my right ankle. Uh, it happened on a play in Ottawa. We were playing the Ottawa, uh, what was there, Rough Riders, was it, there at the time? And uh, I was, I was, my covering, Bob Simpson. Uh, it's kind of a funny thing because we played basketball together in Windsor, and and he was in high school, a different one than I was. But uh, it happened then. We were in the end zone. We got too close together. My right foot, I was wearing low cuts. My right foot, the, the uh, cut caught in his low, low uh, shoes, and he went back in the end zone, and I went the other way, and that's when it happened. It dislocated the ankle. Took a while, a long while, but we had an excellent surgery in in, um, in Brantford as a team as a team doctor, who did a good job. Okay, now you were able to play somewhat the following yeah, year. Yeah, uh, on a limit, a sort of a limited, yeah. a limited basis. As I said one of my main jobs was to hold for the place kicker, mm -hmm. Tip Logan, a good old buddy of mine. <laughs> Do you think there's any equipment out there today that might have protected you from that injury? And 
is there any, any different medical treatment today that might have allowed you to prolong your career? Well, maybe high, high, sh high uh, shoes would have probably prevented that because it would have just slid off mm -hmm. on there. It might have, he might have felt it more than me, but, but uh, in the way of shoes, I don't know. They're, uh, I don't think there's too much you can do in that regard. Uh, the problem, as I see it nowadays, is with this this concussion business. I never, I was fortunate. I never uh, suffered from that at all. Um, but some of these hits that you see in the, of course, the players are a lot bigger, and uh, the helmets. <laughs> Must weigh a lot too, but other than that, I don't. You know, I don't think there's. I think the the referees have to do a, a better job. I think on on locating that. You know, so it's pretty tough to to come up with something that would be foolproof all the time. Okay. Yeah. What was the transition like when you? retired from being a professional athlete to being a retired one and was it difficult? No, not really because that that allowed me to get into into the coaching and I, having played both football and basketball I was able to to get into the uh, the sport of coaching and uh, trying to get you know trying to get the kids to learn what I, I'm trying to teach them and so on and uh, that, yeah, it worked out fine and um, it didn't interfere with my day you know once four o'clock got there I was free to go and do the coaching with, with the boys so, and I did that until mm -hmm. 19 87. I coached football and basketball. Of course, so after after years. yeah, after I after I was done with with playing, that allowed me to get involved in both both activities. You know, so. Did you have any mentors who had an impact on your life, your sport, or your career? Again. Did you have any mentors that inspired you or? in your sport or your career? Um, I would say in high school, yeah, we had a we had an excellent uh, high school football coach and um, the the ones, John Metris at the University of Western Ontario he was nicknamed the Bull and uh, he knew he knew a lot about the football. He came from the University of Detroit and there as a coach. Um, I think those those two people were probably the most involved, you know. So, so, um, I, as I see, I just, I just read this here not too long ago. Well, I was going through that stuff and it had a picture of the high school coach, and uh, he had suddenly passed away. George George Thompson, I think it was. So um, he was a great guy, <laughs> and I I don't know. I didn't get any great guys from the people I coached, but. Uh, I tried to do my best, and that's all you can ask for, you know. So sure. we had some successes and some that didn't work out, but so be it. <laughs> okay. Do you have any thoughts on what the future of football in this area is? The future of football in this area? Right. Well, I think, uh, we, you know, we had a number of, uh, like, I think of, uh, oh, I wish I had that list out here now. Uh, Davy Clark, who was at uh, North Park, he played f football. 
um, who, uh, oh, who was the guy from uh, St. John's? Is that John Pakula? Joe. Joe? Who was it? Joe Pakula? Yeah, Joe Pakula. Uh, and there were, there was a number, a goodly number of players that, you know, from the, from this high school. And that's basically the only thing, unless you call that uh, league they had uh, that interfered with people playing in the high school. <laughs> I, I don't remember their, and I don't want to remember their names either. Last question we have, Ray, is what advice would you share with a young, aspiring athlete? Well, I've I had experience with this when I, I uh, would maybe speak a little more loudly than I would otherwise if there was something that was done that the kid would know he should not be doing this type of thing. And I said, look, I said, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to put you down. What I'm trying to do is to encourage you to play the game the way it's supposed to be played. This is all for helping you learn and it's things that have to be done in the sport. Um, so uh, sure, coaches will sometimes get a little bit riled and react, and, but um, I think you have to you have to take it in mind and go with it and do the best you can. These these advices, the, if they suggest a particular thing that you're doing or you're not doing that they will mention those things to you and hopefully you will pick it up from there.